<laughs> All right. Welcome back. You grown. Yeah, no, last time I uploaded to the channel, I think we had like 650 subscribers. And now we have over 800. So finals are over now, which means I can pretty much just focus on making videos. I can make videos on a more consistent schedule, and we're going to shoot for at least twice a week. That's what I try and do anyways, but oftentimes life gets in the way, school gets in the way. Uh, but now, it's just me and you. Welcome. Let's talk about microphones. So whenever I was looking into Lewitt and researching the brand, this same phrase kept coming up. Best in class. Which is a little bit confusing to me because I think any microphone company or any company in general worth their weight is going to attempt to be best in class. But with Lewitt, I kind of see where they're coming from because we are looking at a microphone that is trying to do something new, trying to do something very contemporary and not necessarily trying to emulate a lot of the old formulas of other more successful microphones. Now, the result of that is we get a feature set of the Lewitt that is kind of unique to the company and really innovative. We get things like dual output microphones. We get things with stereo recording microphones. We get stuff like a free plugin that you can download to reverse the phase of a microphone after you've already recorded it. And I'm assuming they do that through a lot of creative EQing. And yeah, a lot of cool things coming out of this company. And what I love is they're not really trying to emulate any other older design. Oftentimes we see companies that are just emulating like an AKG 414 or a U87 or another Neumann microphone. Uh, but with Lewitt, they're very clearly doing their own thing. And you can see that just in their aesthetic. They're not necessarily trying to emulate old vintage gear that fills you with lovely old nostalgia. Now with the Rode, I've talked about this time and time again with all the different videos I've done with the Rode NT1. The Rode is about simplicity and doing simplicity really well. It's got one polar pattern, it's built really well, it's got a 10 year warranty if you're worried about that, and all of the features of the Rode aren't as apparent as you would see on something like the Lewitt. For example, the things that make the Rode worthwhile to a lot of people are the flat frequency response, the low self noise, and an internal shock mount that's keeping this thing from hearing a lot of the outside world, keeping it from hearing itself, and it has a lot of smooth mid-range responses. All these things are not immediately apparent by just looking at the microphone. It just looks like a microphone. In contrast, the Lewitt makes all of its features pretty well known, and we'll go through that a little bit later in the video, but we're essentially talking about something that has proven reliability and proven capability and proven simplicity versus something that is cutting edge, innovative, and incredibly flexible. Let's get into that flexibility because obviously this thing is called the LCT441 Flex, but the reason it's called Flex and the reason it's so flexible is because it has eight polar patterns. Kind of. And also they light up whenever you turn the microphone on or you give them phantom power. I'll, I'll put in a clip of me on my phone doing it. Yeah, so all the polar patterns it has, it has cardioid, wide cardioid, super cardioid, omni, figure eight, reverse cardioid, reverse wide cardioid, and reverse super cardioid. Now, the reason I say kind of is because this is a double-sided microphone, meaning you can get a cardioid pattern from one side and you can get a cardioid pattern from the other. So whenever we say this thing has eight polar patterns, we're just talking about cardioid, super cardioid, and wide cardioid backwards, which seems kind of like it's cheating. If I wanted to, I could get reverse cardioid from my road, just turning it around. <laughs> yeah, to me, it seems kind of like a marketing ploy to say it has eight polar patterns uh, with like reverse polar patterns being included. I think it's better to market it as a microphone with five polar patterns and the capability to reverse the direction of the diaphragm. Don't get me wrong, it's cool that you can flip the polar patterns of the microphone, uh, but I don't see many creative applications of that, besides perhaps using it as a texture underneath your primary recording. So let's go over the specs between these two microphones, just some of the more important ones. On the NC1, we get a one inch gold diaphragm. On the LCT441, we get a one inch gold diaphragm. One inch diaphragms are great for picking up a lot of nice sensitivity uh, and a really detailed audio image. You're also going to get 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, otherwise known as the threshold of human hearing with the Rode NT1. You're also going to get 20 hertz to the 20,000 hertz, otherwise known as the threshold of human hearing, or all that you can hear with your ears with both these microphones. They can pick up everything that you can hear. And um, 
probably more. In terms of self noise, the Rode NT1 has a self noise of 4 dBA, which is widely considered to be one of the quietest microphones you can buy in terms of the self noise it produces. If you're worried about what 4 dBA actually is in terms of how you hear, it's about one sixth the volume of a whisper. The Lewitt has 7 dBA, also extremely quiet and about a fifth the volume of an average whisper. <laughs> Sound pressure level, the loudest volume that these things can take. The Rode NT1, 134 decibels of sound pressure level. The Lewitt, 144. That is really good for a condenser. Condensers oftentimes have difficulty picking up really loud signals. To give you an idea of how loud 144 decibels is, the threshold of human pain is 130 decibels. A jet engine is 140. 144 decibels. So you're gonna be fine recording your loud guitar with this. You're gonna be all right. In general, if the sound you're recording hurts to listen to, it's probably gonna hurt the microphone. Let's talk about the difference between the more popular LCT-440 and the LCT-441 Flex. It's in the name. This is more flexible. I looked up the specification. To the best of my knowledge, both of these are going to be using the exact same diaphragm, and in these specifications, the numbers vary slightly. I'll, I'll leave them up on the screen. But in general, they have much of the same specifications, give or take a few units. The big difference, obviously, is all of the different polar patterns you can select with the LCT441 Flex. In terms of my personal opinion on the Lewitt, I really like it. I think it has a nice sort of compressive quality on the mid-range of my voice, and my voice is very mid-range heavy, low mid-range heavy. And the sibilance is noticeable, but not insane. I actually think the Rode NT1 has a, a worse sibilance response, meaning it's, it's a bit harsher in the high end even though this seems to have a higher boost in the high end. Yeah, great microphone. Both of these great microphones. So as always, we're going to have our guest singer come and sing one of their songs, and then we're going to take the track away and just hear it acapella. And then we're going to do our patented, not really, blind guitar hearing test. So you don't have the ability to see which microphone is which, and you can decide just using your ears. Today we have the extremely talented Eli Major Wright coming in to do a, a vocal. He's a brilliant lyricist. Please go check him out on Instagram and on his YouTube channel. Let's go. You torn and you splinter, you tied up blue winters, you see what you like. But don't know how to get there, sit down, stop shifting. You know what you're missing, but you a hothead. You don't wanna listen. Ain't one for flashy, but things getting ashy. They need you out in front. Why you wanna play the backseat? But sure, the world's wacky. The snakes get acky. But when you call your mama or your sister or your body, tell you, let go, let go, let go, yeah. You know you got all that you need. You know they tell you. Let go, let go, let go, yeah It don't matter who you got on your team You know you win Uh, guitarists out there, uh, the Lewitt can move on this axis, but in terms of actually moving the microphone, they don't really have much movement when it comes to moving the microphone within the shock mount, if that means anything to you. It means stuff to me whenever I have to make mic placement decisions on the, on the guitar. I definitely like the Rode NT1 better for the guitar. If anyone cares, I like this one better. If this video helped you make a decision on one of these two microphones, there's going to be an affiliate link pinned in a comment down below. That's how this channel makes money for the time being. I really appreciate your support. Follow me on Instagram at Real Audio Haze. If you want lessons, email me at realaudiohaze at gmail.com. I'll put my qualifications up on the screen now. And that's it. Goodbye.